Hi, I'm Paul Bowman, CEO of Wexa, the digital fitness specialist who deliver over 25 million fitness experiences for our partners for, worldwide. Welcome to the Wexa podcast, where I'll be speaking to industry experts to bring you insights and advice to support your business journeys. In today's episode, I'll be chatting with, chatting with Andrew Holder, Managing Director at Revo Fitness. I'm excited for this one. Andrew, how are you? Thanks for having me. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? And coming from Perth? Yep, coming live from Perth. You, you, you're born and bred Perth. Yes, I am. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Okay. And I think that flows nicely into my question because I actually want to know the background of, of this man. So so give me a little background of uh, before we even go into what you do at Revo, because of course you're managing director of it. But how did you know, did you find fitness or did fitness find you? Yeah, fitness um, kind of found me. I grew up in a um, in a really small business environment. My father and family started indoor sports business when I was around 10 years of age and you know, sold the family home for this dream of, you know, running indoor sports in Western Australia. Um, And so, yeah, I've always been around that kind of entrepreneurial spirit. And no. when I was studying at the University of Western Australia, I was working in that in that business and, you know, found an opportunity to kind of take over a small PT studio that was inside yeah. it. Yeah. And um, that's where my journey began. I was an avid, you know, aspiring sports person and yeah. um, was always really leaning into my health and fitness journey um, just to get the most out of me um, professionally in that sporting environment. And so it was a nice little fit. And, you know, I built that passion and, you know, built that kind of camaraderie with our members and community. And 12 years later, we're here. And, and how much do you learn? I come from a byproduct of a father that was very entrepreneurial as well. But like, how much do you learn from your from from your family in that regard? Because I always say, they, I always I, when I first started a business, they didn't know anything. But now, the more and more I get go through business, I realise they actually knew a hell of a lot. Yeah. <laughs> how much, how much rubbed off on you? Yeah, a lot. I mean, the reality is that the sacrifice and determination to make a small business work is absolutely enormous, and the amount of sacrifices that you have to have to have for the family to be able to make it successful is, yeah, pretty astronomical. And you know, my dad, you know, obviously started the business, but it kind of transcends not just you know the person who's running the business. You know, watching my mum run three jobs, you know, get on the road, um, you know, me being in the car and watching her hustle and, you mm. know, do everything she could to, you know, provide a, a great, you know, you know, life for my, myself and my brother to be able to go to, a, you know, a great school to get educated, you know, to be able to put myself um, in the best position to be successful long term. Yeah. You know, it, it is certainly, um, I'm a very grateful person to be able to be put into that position um, at an early doors, but, you know, it comes from that graft and that grit and determination mm. from a small business owner. Nicely said. And then for people, you know, many of our listeners are uh, international. So, so for just give a little bit of a ninety seconds on on what Revo is. What do you, what 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 is what does the day to day look like for you? Yeah. So I'm the founder and managing director. So I started Revo Fitness back in 2012 out of a small 200 square meter facility uh, in Shenton Park, Western Australia. I saw, I saw the photo of that. It's a, yeah. it's a nice post. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um. And yeah. So I started. You know, started young as a 21 year old and saw a gap within the high value, low cost aspect of the market. So, you know, high quality um, fit outs at a, at a premiumly low price. Um, so really kind of lent into that value um, disparity and mm. essentially now have 36 locations nationally around Australia. Um, one of the largest operators of gyms in Australia, all starting from a small 200 square meter facility in Shenton Park, which is pretty cool. It's a great, great, great success story. And, and I guess what does 2024 look like for you? Yeah, it's a great, it's a great year for Revo. I mean, last year we had a very successful year in terms of rolling out um, new locations through South Australia and Victoria um, predominantly. Yeah. Um, and also our new product offering, which is the studio, which is our level two offering, which is self-led reform of Pilates, massage chairs, Avolt body scanners. Um, so last year was phenomenal, but mm -hmm. this year it's just put, into practice and you know executing what we were planning on doing last year so um you know our design and development team have worked have, have been working you know their butts off our leasing team have been working their butts off and we've got a really strong um you know strong pipeline coming into not only 2024 but 2025 so planning on opening around 15 locations nationally mm -hmm. this year um so we'll get to around 50 um by oh. the end of calendar year um but the next financial year is going to be a big one for us as well, which is exciting. And, and are those sites predominantly going to stay in WWA? You're moving outside of WA? Yeah, absolutely. So currently speaking, we've got around five, we've got five locations in Victoria, six locations 
in South Australia, three in New South Wales, but our predominant focus over the next 12 months is solidifying in West Australia. Um, yeah. We've got a really great brand presence over here. Yeah. Um, you know, disrupting the market in South Australia and Victoria is our predominant approach and, you know, providing a fitness facility that's affordable with a high quality finish, um, I think is going to, you know, really resonate with the people of South Australia and Victoria um, mm -hmm. and, you know, keep growing in those markets. And, and for the, we have a lot of entrepreneurs listening to this podcast. So, so what would be your major three that, you, like, in terms of taking it? You know, a lot of people <laughs> maybe listening to this podcast, sitting on two, maybe two to ten sites. You know, going and think even any further than that is always a big ask. Like, what was your kind of why? How did you do that? How did you, how did you grow this quickly? Yeah, I, I was I was really lucky. I've I've got some really great mentors around me to be able to give me some pretty you know prominent advice early doors and. George, one of my business partners, um, really um, taught me at an early early age um, within my business journey that you know systems is what makes a company great, not just the product itself. And so, um, you know, you may want to be the most important person in the room, but it's not about you in the end. And you know, the best leader is the one that can hand off responsibility to others. And so, my predominant focus as a founder was to make sure that the business wasn't surrounded. And you know, revolved around me personally. It was about actually making the business what it should be and give it the chance to grow to be able to be what it wants to be. Yeah. And so my responsibility revolves around making sure it's simple, sustainable, and scalable. And so that that leans into systems, that leads into autonomous functions, um, and the technology that we're implementing um, across our business. And to be fair, like everyone I've engaged with Arivo. Um, that you manage, they own their stuff. That you know, they can, yeah. they can, they can, they talk about it like it's theirs, um, yeah. which is you know, kudos to you because that doesn't that doesn't flow, and and that's a byproduct of your leadership style, I guess. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Like, I, I really value execution and and you know, visionaries, and you know, I want to be surrounded with like minded people who want to create change and create value for people. Yeah. Um, I've been really fortunate to find some really high quality people to be able to share this journey with. And it's my responsibility to be able to bring those, um, you know, those employees and those friends and those and those people along with me, um, yep. you know, in that growth phase. No, uh, nice, great advice. And then of course, it, it, it is a digital podcast. So I've got to go digital, yeah. but I know you're a believer. So, so, you know, how important is digital fitness within Revo? You know, you've just launched the new app. Uh, that's gone incredibly well. Get, yeah. you know, give us a little flavor. Yeah, so we launched the app um, in late January and we went, uh, we went really well. It was, a, it was a wonderful launch. Our marketing team, our, our technology and IT team did a phenomenal job in terms of procuring that and be able to, you know, engage with our our members really well to be able to, you know, top the charts for the first two weeks. So number one in Australia for the health and fitness app, as well as in general, which was, you know, beyond my wildest expectations or dreams. And that was that was a pretty phenomenal moment. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. a bit of woohooing in the car by myself. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're at the top of the app store, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Very, very, very cool, pretty. come and collected in the office and then getting in my car, driving to my next yeah. meeting, yeah, I'm yelling out the windows and people probably thinking, what's going on here? Yeah, well um, done. No, it was very exciting. Um, but for us, it was all about making sure that we could engage with our, our members the best way possible. Um, mm. And so... For us, because we play at the value end of the market in an inflationary mm. environment, you know, leaning into autonomy, letting members drive their own user journey, um, yeah. access fitness the way that they want, when they want, how they want was really important. And, you know, it's our responsibility um, as, a, as, a, as a company because we are scaling is to provide that service now so it becomes scalable as yeah. we continuously grow. And so for us, you know, being able to partner with Wexar, um, eGym, and being able to integrate with Perfect Gym as well in a way where people can join the gym at 2 a.m., access our app, and then scan yeah. in um, was huge for us. And it wasn't determinant and dependent on an employee behind the counter serving. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the whole idea of having, you know, the app is to take, you know, some of the responsibility off our employees so the employees yeah. can really focus on the member experience. Yeah. And if we can do that right, you know, we're we're going. We've got a really good chance in terms of changing this industry for the better. Nice, and and, and like that's I would say that's one of the people, like a lot of people that come on here. That one of the things that they struggle with is, yeah, I guess how how technology works as a as a solution to actually support their day to day. Like, did you have to communicate that? Like, you've done that successfully very very well. Like, what what, what was the buy in levels and how did you do that? 
Yeah, look, I mean, it, it, half the battle is actually just communication. So, you know, bringing people along the journey early doors, um, you know, if it's an idea, you know, in that incubation stage, it, it, it's important to actually share your thoughts and where you want the company to go. And so that's my responsibility and our, and our senior leadership team's responsibility yeah. in terms of, you know, making sure that we're clear, transparent in our communication lines through our, you know, internal servers, int our intranets, you know, in, in our operations teams, making sure that they know what's coming. It's not just a surprise yeah. and how, how this, how it's just not another new thing. It's actually, we're, we're creating this kind of uh, technology to help you in your day-to-day -day service of our members and then, yeah. you know, therefore help grow the company, which will also grow people's careers in, you know, opportunities within our company. And and I would say this again, kudos to you, because, you know, I talked to the CS team before I jumped on this, said they probably explained the why you were doing it better than any other operator we've ever done a launch with. Yeah, um, which I think is, is, is a really, a really important thing, especially as you scale. You, know, you can't you can't be, you can't update every single person face to face, right? With the size yeah. that you are now. So again, well, well, well done. I, mean, I feel like this is just a well done session for you, but it's, it's really good for people to, for people to hear that. And then, and then I guess like in terms of usage, how's usage gone and, and, and what, what's your plans for the future? Yeah, in terms of uh, our physical form or our app form? Uh, yeah, usage in terms of, yeah, your app. Sorry. Yeah, our, our app uptake's been great. I think we've had over 30,000 downloads within the first six weeks, which is great. Yeah. You know, that's not only just our membership base, but also general, you know, the yeah. general public. Our, our focus is really leaning into that Wexa content yeah. to be able to, you know, service more of Australia. I mean, there's only so many physical locations you can open at, at a certain time or a certain capacity because the reality is, you know, we're at less than 1% vacancy rate in Australia in terms of large format retails. So, you know, it's a really, it's a really right. difficult um, time to be able to find sites, especially right. at that thousand to three and yeah. a half thousand square meter format. So, yeah. you know, for us, it's about engaging our brand um, in a way that still services, um, you know, the people of Australia, you know, our, our vision yeah. and, our, and our purpose is to provide affordable fitness to Australians. That doesn't yeah. necessarily mean it has to be in the physical form. Okay. Um, so our, our, our focus with our marketing team, our operations team is, you know, how we how can we leverage our app and, you know, the work of yeah. content to the best of our ability to be able to yeah. service yeah. the majority of Australia. And and is there thoughts on content creation moving forward? You know, I, I, we're seeing, of course, a lot of the low cost um, brands actually start create, creation of their own content. Is there is it something yeah. that's on the roadmap? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we went through a period of time um, where the, you know, the boutique industry started really scaling in Australia, yeah. um, you know, mid you know, 2015, 2016. Yeah, yeah. And we we want to get in front of that. And so we've gotten a paint, we had a patent approved product called HitFit, which is yeah. 24 yeah. seven circuit training inside our facility. So we're, we're not, um, we're not against creating our own content. We've done mm -hmm. it, you know, on multiple occasions. And, you know, that patent approved product ended up being, you know, a great facility, you know, a great initiative for us going through COVID because yeah. we were able to offer that online for our members as well as, yeah. you know, students and and schools to be able to stay fit and healthy during those lockdown periods. And so, yeah, that content procurement and creation is something that that's definitely um, in our in our front of mind coming into budgeting budgeting season. So, um, good to know. Good to know. And then I, I guess I guess for you, you know, what we kind of talked about your journey, but. What advice would you, you know, you've, you've been named finalist of uh, EY's Entrepreneur of the Year, so congratulations on that as well. But, you know, like in terms of growing, you know, more, more than least not talk, we were talked about how you take it from two to two to 36 sites. But, you know, what would be your advice for the people that are listening to this that haven't started yet? Maybe in, you know, maybe in the industry, but actually haven't, haven't taken the leap. What would be your advice there? I think it comes back down for me playing team sport. It's not about you. Yeah. Um, you know, if if you're focused on what you're wanting to try and achieve rather than what you're trying to create for others, I think it it narrows your mindset. I think for me, knowing that, you know, what what we're creating at Revo is servicing so much of the public and creating such a healthy, you know, yeah. in, you know, healthy environment for people to access fitness and, and stay healthy and, you know, get on top of their mental health and well-being, mm -hmm. um, you know, that drives you every day. And then, you know, we're in an office environment, right? So, you know, like you're not in the gyms, but, you know, the way that I can, you know, create relationships with my direct reports or the people around me actually, you know, floats down through our company and throats throughout our, floats throughout our company. And so yeah. For, yeah. for me, it's about what you can influence around you and and knowing yeah. that, you know, you know, the business isn't about me. It's about how I can serve others. Um, so I think that that's always kept me in good stead over the 12 years of journey. And 
12 years, 12 years of our journey. Um, and the reality is that it's always graft, you know, <laughs> I mean, people going, oh, you, you, you're going really well. You're opening so many clubs, you know, like it's just an overnight success, but you know, up until up until 2019, there was three people in our head office. Right. You know? and yeah. It was just and and that and I was one of them. And we were doing we were doing all of those service call outs and you know going out to our clubs as an operations team and doing all of those things. You know, like it, it's about taking it taking your chance and running with it. But you know, we're, we're very grateful, and it's always not never been about me or never been about you know the people in our office. It's about how we can serve our community the best way possible. That's a nice way to put it. And then, and then, like, how do you balance the grind versus strategy? You know, I think it's something that I battle with on a day to day basis. I imagine yeah. you do as well. What, what's what's your what's what's your thinking on that? Yeah, I think I think that's why I really valued being able to get. You know, I'm I'm in the gyms a lot, so I I travel into our facilities and you know keep a mm-hmm. you know keep keep an eye and you know just see how people are engaging with the product because yeah. you know that that customer journey is something that. I extraordinarily value and, and I'm very obsessed about, you know, like the the member creates the value for our company and we need to create the value for them to then create it for us. So it's a very cyclical right. relationship. And so, you know, being in the club, seeing how they operate, seeing how they, you know, engage with our business is really important. But, you know, from a strategy perspective, that's why I really appreciate obviously having a lot of gyms have their offices inside their, mm. their gyms. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so having that ability to kind of breathe away and work on the business rather than being in the business is a, is also a really important facet in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just blocking out some really clear times um, to be able to talk strategically with our leadership team. Um, yeah. You know, talk with my business partners about you know you know ideas that I'm having and you know essentially just leaning into every bad idea and there's no new there's no bad ideas um, has been a really good way of being able to. You know, scale the business. I had a, there was a really good quote was that you know don't judge me on my bad ideas, judge yeah. me on my good ideas, and so it just really opens up that you know communication channels for our team to be able to, you know, not judge each other on those kind of things, and just really be open and honest about how we can improve as a company every single day. But, but clearly, you've created a forum where you're not the only one that's creating the ideas as well. You know, I see yeah. so many entrepreneurs are amazing entrepreneurs, but they rely on themselves to your point a bit earlier right They're like it's you've, you've got a team that are constantly fostering new new idea creation and you're allowing them to do that like i guess is, is that fair yeah absolutely i think again you know it's not fun for me if it's if i'm doing it by myself you yeah. know it, that that's not fun you know you yeah. want to bring you want you want to bring people along the journey and the only way you can do that is you know by you know giving them responsibility giving them the chance to shine and you know essentially let them drive initiatives, let them drive ideas and, you know, implement things and, and go from, you know, formation to create, well, creation to execution. You know, that that's that's something that I really value within our team. And, you know, our, our team, are, this is the way that I explain it, but we want to be experts in execution, right? Yeah. So you can't, you, so you need something to execute. So yeah. if you want to, if you want something to execute, you need to come up with ideas. So let's just keep, you know, keep formatting it. And I think it's also, you know, because we we've come from we, we've got a startup mentality, yeah, and we're and we're a founder led business. Yeah. We're always questioning the way that we operate. So it's not just this is yeah. just the standard modelling and this is yeah. the way that we roll out. It's okay. How can we do better? You know, after we open a club, you know, we do our lessons learned. Okay, yeah. what went well? What needs to improve? And you know, you're always just you know tightening tightening the wheel um, and tightening the cogs and you know, marginal marginal improvements, right? Yeah, exactly marginal right. Exactly. So. Yeah, that 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 kind of you know measurable you know uh, continuous improvements all yeah. always important for us. And and uh, lovely, I want to get your view on Australia in general. We had we had Barry on here, and you highlighted some amazing stats about Australia in terms of its growth. Like what, what in your in your view, what 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 is growing the Australian growth right now? I think the awareness of well being and the mental health capacity has been a huge mm-hmm. one. Um, yeah. Being in a lockdown environment, especially on the east coast, we were very fortunate in Western Australia to be. Mm-hmm. You know, the most isolated city yeah. on earth, to our benefit um yeah. and so every you know seeing what other states um and and us in a certain way went through people yeah. really just valued that that sense of community that yeah. sense of looking after oneself and having that almost third space to you know train and play yeah you know, totally. and with that kind of integration of you know work and office being that one place now I think right. people are yearning for that other place to be able to go to and, and find a sense of self. Yes. Um, and so I think that that's really lent into our industry well because, um, you know, what, what other place can you find where you can, you know, feel good about yourself, meet new yeah. people, um, 
and you know get on top of you know your your well-being and and, and help your mental health and how you feel about oneself right like it's a phenomenal place previously yeah. in australia you'd go down to the pub with a mate now yeah. We're seeing on a Friday afternoon, Friday night, people are going for a gym session. Like it's yeah, a phenomenal yeah. shift in the Australian culture, in my opinion, and and it, and it's ex an exciting place to be. I'm um, in the fitness industry. I, did, right? I actually I actually just went to a rave class in LA. Really? Um, so, we, so, back, so back in the day in gym box, uh, you know, we we yeah. did rave classes, but they actually brought them in. That they're actually just fitness rave classes, but between twelve. 12 to 3 in the morning so you yeah. can then so it was a bit it was interesting put it that way i don't know if it's going to yeah. stick but it's just hilarious the adoption and so there's a few people that might have had a few to drink before they even started the race club <laughs> but came out just extremely sweaty but it's um it's hard case it really works so it's uh kudos to i think i think i can't remember the name of it um uh, uh, like uh, it's a ministry of music or something like that it's not yeah. Of um so yeah actual fitness rave classes at, well, at, at, at evening evening uh evening time so um there you yeah. go Love it. Love so it. Then, That's where it's going. Because correct me if I'm wrong, and this might be just me being too stereotypical. Gen, Gen Z is a large amount of your your uh, members. Is that right? Yeah, like we we target the 18 to 40 year old um, demographic okay. quite heavily, but we we look at it like cafe culture in Australia. You know, right. it, cafe culture doesn't segregate. You know, if you, if it's a nice restaurant or a good cafe, yes. regardless, you still go there, right? So. Um, it's just more so the engaged population with fitness is there. So we we right. obviously will lean into that, but it yeah. doesn't mean that we get the you know older generations coming and using our facilities. We are very much a melting pot of fitness because yeah, when, when we first started, I, I wanted to find a place where I could train like a sports yeah. person, right? Yeah. And yeah. but at the same point in time, I really wanted to feel comfortable with where I wanted to train. And, yeah. and so, you know, when we started, you know, opening when we opened the club, our first location. You know, it was just always about asking our member, what what equipment do you want? What what do you need? You know, what kind of like, you know, training do you like to do? And then all of a sudden, like you start building this business plan around yeah. what your members actually want. And then yeah. all of a sudden you start feeling more comfortable about yourself. It's a pretty, yeah. pretty amazing thing. No, I agree. But, but you know, how, how much have, have we taken this? What I really respect about you is the fact that you're constantly adapting it. Because a lot, a lot of you could argue that a lot of we've built fitness clubs already before. This has already been thought about. Yeah. But you don't know exactly how your local population is actually going to adjust to it. Like, you know, if I look at how the trends in the Nordics versus the trends in the, in, uh, in Australia, it's, it, it is completely different. Like if I, you know, from a content point of view, we're seeing strength and wellness being kind of the two big ones that is everyone's getting pushed. But in certain markets, it's still very much yoga Pilates that, that's actually the major driver. So if you don't actually ask those questions and you take what's been done before, you're never ever going to find that innovation. So fair play to you. What, what, like what, like by you being so focused on that member journey and asking those questions, essentially having a direct feed loop, a feedback loop, is there anything that you've created that's driven that in innovative cycle for you more than, more than others maybe? I think like, I think it comes down to it's more, it's more a mindset than anything yeah. else. I think, yeah. you know, you can get caught in perception over perspective, right? Yeah. You can perceive what people want rather than having the perspective of what somebody actually wants and yes. needs. And yeah. so I think, you know, trying to be that, you know, fly on the wall th third eye kind of mentality of yeah. you know, asking the right questions and not what I want it to be um, yeah. and not being so um, fixated on what I wanting to be right. I just want the yeah. right for the person and our member um, yeah. and the people around us. I think that that actually helps a lot. I think it's just a mentality yeah. and an approach more so than just, you know, leaning into technology. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 yeah, exactly. It's just that I think there's a balance between, you know, intuition as well as just systems. You need to yeah, have that yeah. approach. Well, that's the thing, you know, like from a from a Wixer point of view, we have so much data constantly. So you can kind of get wrapped in it, but actually going to a club and seeing how someone will engage with a virtual system or mobile or what they're actually doing is just, you know, you, I could probably find out more by doing five of those and mm. actually seeing that physical person actually doing it rather than the data of 25 million fitness experiences right yeah, so sure. you've got to find that balance so i think exactly that's right that's great okay and then and then sir like, how, how do people connect with you look linkedin's probably a pretty good one i'm i, I get pretty bombarded in the messaging so yeah. i try and get back on top of my dms as much as i can on linkedin but yeah linkedin's definitely the the main uh the main yeah. port of call for me yeah for sure there you go. And then and next speaking, when, when are you speaking next? When's your next industry event? I'm actually not sure. Um, I think I've got something coming up, but I, nothing nothing on top of mind. So 
got to grow a business. You got to, got a lot, lot, lot to get on with. Look, yeah. look, Andrew, I really appreciate you sharing your insights and, and thank you for joining us on the Wexer podcast. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.